good afternoon everyone uh, myself dr arjun kundu currently currently i am uh, doing my phd from national forensic science university and today my topic is a review on uh, forensic facial reconstruction technique actually uh, this is my phd topic also and currently i am working on the digital aspect of uh, forensic facial reconstruction uh, to start with uh, a basic uh, regarding uh, forensic facial reconstruction uh it is an important tool in recreating the facial appearance of the skull that best resembles the original face of the deceased in an effort to pursue identification the reconstruction techniques are usually uh, based on uh, the relationship between the underlying heart tissue structure such as the bone and the soft tissue that is the facial muscles glands and everything and obviously the features uh, it is an uh, basically a combination of both scientific methods and artistic skills uh in case uh, in a forensic investigation where the traditional methods of identification are not useful and where there are limited clues uh for the, in the investigation uh in that case facial reconstruction might be useful to recreate the face and aid in investigation uh when uh, when uh, a decomposed mutilated or skeletonized body is found facial reconstruction should always be considered as a viable option to help in identify the remains i will come to the uh, process uh, basically there are uh, two types of uh, process uh, that is the two two dimensional and three dimensional the two dimensional facial reconstruction is uh, of the face is usually drawn over a photograph of, of the skull it can be done manually or digitally uh, when we uh, do digit uh, three dimensional facial reconstruction it, it is usually a sculpting technique which again can be done manually and digitally now the methods uh, Uh, the the first one is the anatomical method in the anatomical method uh, the reconstruction of the face is sculpted by uh, keeping uh, the muscles glands cartilages and finally the skin on the skull okay uh, it is also known as russian method and the method generally attributes to the renowned russian anthropologist gerasimov the next one is other uh, tissue depth method uh, it uses average skin thickness measurement the tissue depth markers as specific points on the skull to guide the soft tissue reconstruction uh, this is the modern version of the tissue depth method is now known as american method it is it is most commonly used by forensic artists working in law enforcement environment the method is developed by krogman and the last one is the combination method that is a manchester method it is basically the uh, combination of both the tissue depth markers and the anatomical uh, method now uh, starting about the uh, phase of reconstruction the first one is the preparatory phase uh, so uh, the first uh, we have to prepare a case file where we put we get the uh, evidence we put the forensic case number from where the skull is obtained we put that with the age gender and history we determine from the skull okay and we note down any anomalies we if anything we get we just note down there uh the few things we have to keep in mind that in case we get a identical in mandible the mandible is placed the uh, mandible is placed with a pencil through the oppo opposite mandibular notch when the mandible is identical but dangers are available missing the gingiva is stimulated with a sheet of wax or clay before positioning the denture when we work uh, suppose uh, we got a badly damaged skull in that case the skull uh, must be reassembled uh we can use sticky wax or it's uh, to, to glue the skull uh, pieces okay in case uh, maybe any piece is missing so we can just uh, model it by uh, wax or something we can carve it and we can replace the part in case of mandible uh, in uh, in case where the mandible is missing there are few uh, methods of uh, like by krogman okay where we use orth orthodontic measurements to reconstruct the the new facial relationship the best part uh, to the, the one of the most important part is to uh, before doing the reconstruction is making a copy of the skull it can be done by using alginate or silicon impression materials now with the uh, advancement of technology 3d scanning and ct scan along with 3d printing can aid in better and accurate repl replicas of the skull and also without touching and tampering the, the skull uh working on a skull replica allows to decrease the chances of damage to the original skull allow the skull to uh, it, it can we can preserve the skull also and it, it may it uh, we can uh, we can leave a record 
for our uh, readers. Now, uh, next we are uh, gluing the skull on on this stand. We can use a cranio force to use uh, to do a such thing, and then we can position the skull on a on front front foot horizontal plane. Okay, it is a uh, it is an anthropological standard position that uh, closely approximates the natural position of the head in life. Keeping uh, the skull in this orientation will limit distortion. To achieve this position, the lower point of the lower margin of the orbit is horizontally aligned with the porion, that is the most lateral point on the roof of the external auditory meters, and we can get this, uh, this position. Now we'll come uh, to the re uh, reconstruction phase. So first, we'll uh, see the anatomical methods. We'll just uh, go through the methods quickly. Okay. The first thing we have to do is uh, put uh, the eye, eye. We have to set the prosthetic, prosthetic eye. Uh, from the front, uh, the eye should be basically be centered within the orbit. The apex of the cornea, when viewed from the normal frontal, is at the junction of two lines, one drawn from the medial edge of the orbit to the lateral margin of the orbit, and the other line bisecting the orbit between the superior and inferior margin. Next, uh, we'll come to the muscles, the development of the muscles. So we'll first start with the muscles of the neck first, the temporal is, uh, 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 we will just uh, do the reconstruction from the muscles of the neck, that is the sternocleidomaniac squared, trapezius, platysma. Then we come to the face. Uh, we will start with temporalis, masseter, vaccinator, mentalis, depressor, labia, inferioris, orbiculus, oris. Then we will come to the nose. Uh, the basic nasal shape is then modeled with the nasal projection uh, taken as uh, the uh, as the point at which the tangents from the last part of the nasal root bone and the nasal spine is intersect. The LR shape are modeled with reference to the nasal aperture, contour, and nasal bone. Then, we, uh, then we'll do the uh, reconstruction of the mouth. The distance between two lines radiating out from the junction of the canine and the first premolar on each side. This is the uh, area where we have to figure out our lips. That means the basically the width of the mouth is determined by the measuring the front six teeth. The vertical thickness of the mouth is derived by measuring the combined height of the enamel of the upper and lower teeth. Uh, to reconstruct the ear, uh, basically the ear uh, soft tissue uh, ear is based on the top of the bony landmark that is the external auditory meters. The ear must be beside behind the angle of the jaw, and the average uh, ear sits at an angle resting backwards about fifteen degree. The ear attaches uh, rather closely at the anterior or front portion and tip out or rather further from the head at the back portion. Now, when all uh, muscles and glands are uh, completed, we put uh, a, a fine layer of clay on the on the above the above the muscles. That is a skin. We might use textures. Okay. We can use accessory if if it is available. In the antimortem data, otherwise we skip uh, avoiding using some accessories that, that are facial features like uh, facial uh, hairs or something, any cut marks or anything. Uh, for the tissue de um, method, we use uh, the standard landmarks. Okay, we have databases of the population, and then we use that at specific landmarks. So first, we uh, take the skull, we orient it in the same way. We put the uh, tissue depth markers in specific landmarks. We, so we cut the clay, we join uh, the markers with that clay, and we just get a face. Uh, with advancement of technology, uh, we can uh, do the whole process uh, digitally now. Actually, currently, I am working on this only. Uh, I am basically using uh, geometric tree form to sculpt the face. So there are a few softwares like Blender. We can use Blender. That is a free software. We can use that to reconstruct. Alternatively, uh, the way we can use uh, Freeform also. There is the, the image you can see in the lower part of the. We have the touchx, uh, uh, geomagic touchx, and geomagic Freeform. Both of them we can be used to do facial reconstruction. Thank you so much.